Hi Filipino learners, my name is JC. Kumusta kayo? In today's video, I will be teaching you how to form simple sentences with lagi, palagi, and lagi na lang. The Tagalog words palagi and lagi means always in English. Now, you will sometimes hear the terms lagi, lagi, and parate. These two also mean always. You can use all four of these interchangeably as they mean the exact same thing. Now, the term palagi na lang or lagi na lang are a bit different, and I will explain to you later in this video how to use those. But first, let me show you how you can form sentences with palagi and lagi. So, you place palagi or lagi at the beginning of the sentence. Halimbawa, laging nagaaway ang mag-asawa. The married couple are always fighting. So, we have lagi at the beginning. One thing to take note here is that we added nang or ng at the end of lagi. And then, it is followed by the verb and then the doer of action. If you've seen my other videos, you know that in Tagalog, that is how we form the sentences. We start with either the verb or adjective, and then followed by the doer of action, or whoever or whatever is being described. So, for example, you want to say, the married couple are fighting, you say, nagaaway ang mag-asawa. But in this case, since there's always, or lagi, we put that at the beginning. Okay, a few more examples. Palaging bumibisita si Carmela. Carmela is always visiting. Okay, for this, I used palagi. And again, just like in our first example, we added ng at the end. And of course, you can also say laging bumibisita si Carmela or parating bumibisita si Carmela or lagi-laging bumibisita si Carmela. Isa pang halimbawa, laging naglalaro ng video games ang mga bata. The children are always playing video games. Now, the rules will change if you're using pronouns for the doers of action. Bibigyan ko kayo ng halimbawa. Palagi akong nagtatabi ng pera. I always set aside money or I always save money. Now, if you look at the positioning, still, you will begin with palagi or lagi. But this time, the doer of action, which is the pronoun, followed it. And then, the verb. And if you look at palagi, we no longer added ng at the end of it. Instead, we added that ng to the pronoun. A few more examples. Palagi kaming nagkikita. We always see each other. Again, we are using a pronoun for the doer of action. So, no more ng at the end of palagi. And instead, we added that at the end of the pronoun. Lagi silang nananalo. They are always winning. Lagi kang masaya. You are always happy. Now, if remembering all of these rules is a bit overwhelming for you at the moment, you can always put palagi at the end of the sentence. Halimbawa, Nagaaway ang mag-asawa palagi. Bumibisita si Carmela palagi. Nagtatabi ako ng pera palagi. Nagkikita kami palagi. Nananalo kayo palagi. Masaya ka palagi. So if you do this where you put palagi at the end, it's the same for all sentence. No rules about where to add ng. You just simply put 
palagi at the end of the sentence. Nalang is something that we add which does not mean anything at all in itself. Because technically, when you say, for example, lagi akong natatalo, and lagi na lang ako natatalo, they're both translated as I always lose in English. But what makes the one with nalang different? If you add nalang, like this one, lagi na lang, this has emotions associated to it, usually negative emotions. Halimbawa, if you say, lagi na lang ako natatalo, it means that you're feeling disappointed or frustrated or sad that you always lose. But again, if you translate this in English, it will still be, I always lose. Because in English, you can tell that there's disappointment based on the person's tone, correct? I always lose. But in Tagalog, it's not only in the tone, but also how you worded the sentence. So, if you say, Lagi akong natatalo, you're just telling it as a fact. You're just stating it. I always lose. But if you say, Lagi na lang akong natatalo, now there's disappointment or frustration. You're not just saying it. In English, you're saying, I always lose. So based on my tone, you can say that I'm disappointed. So there's feelings and I'm not just stating it. Take note that nalang does not always function like this. This is what it means now when combined with lage or palage. But it will have a different meaning if it is combined with other Tagalog words like minsan or sometimes. But that's for another video. What you just need to remember for now is that lagi na lang or palagi na lang is always with emotions attached to it like disappointment, sadness, frustration, etc. For you to better understand, I will give a few more examples. If you say, palaging may sakit si Patricia, you're just telling people that Patricia is always sick. But if you say, palagi na lang may sakit si Patricia, again, there is emotions. It could be you're sad for Patricia or you feel bad for Patricia. And you can tell that not just with my tone, but also because of nalang right here. Isa pang halimbawa, palaging late si Mark. So you're just telling people that you're talking to that Mark is always late. But when you say, palagi na lang late si Mark, this shows that you're frustrated or annoyed about the fact that Mark is always late. So you can hear that on my tone as well, but you need to add na lang to the sentence. Last example, lagi siyang nasa trabaho. He or she is always at work. Now, if you say, lagi na lang siyang nasa trabaho, there's a feeling of being sad or disappointment that he or she is always at work. Maybe because you couldn't spend more time with that person. So you feel um, frustrated or sad about it. Well, there you go. That is it for today's video. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, you may subscribe to this channel. Maraming salamat sa panonood. Sa susunod ulit. Paalam.